the things. So now, let me run this on my device to give you a little sample of what you can do with this to do more advanced recognition. Okay, so this one, it's not in a loop. I have to click it every time. Um, go north. I think you said, go north. Climb up the tree. You said, climb up the tree. Kill the troll with the sword. You said, kill the troll with the sword. Hide under the table. You said, hide under table. Close enough. Oh, I, I, I was not recognizing, because if I had said, like, um, what can I say here? I'm really confused. Not sure what you said. Please try again. So I was, I was way off here, so therefore it doesn't even accept it. So you can see here how SRGS can create some really powerful recognition. And any kind of voice accent would be able to play with this, and it's, it's quite cool. So uh, that's... Now go to some of the quick tricks you can use to optimize your speech recognition. First of all, you can work with multiple grammars and you can mix and match. So you can use, for example, uh, a don't you okay, you cannot mix and match custom and default grammars. So you either use a default grammar or you use a combination of custom grammars, but you cannot say open dictation and phrase list. But you can have multiple phrase lists and multiple grammar constraints using SRGS. And then what you can do is, you, can, you saw how it's easy to create a grammar, either from a phrase list or from a SRGS file, add it to a constraint, and then you add your constraint to a collection of constraints on the recognizer. And then after that, what you can simply do is go, every constraint is going to have a setting called, uh, it's a uh, is enabled property. So you can then simply go and turn on a property, turn off, uh, turn on is enabled, turn off is enabled, so that you can just activate the grammar that you need based on the context where you are within the application. So, and that's much more efficient than at runtime constantly compiling grammars, adding them, and then doing another one. You should just do all of your grammars at once, provided they're not based on dynamic content, of course. And then after that, simply enabling and disabling the grammars that you need using the is enabled property. You will, you will get much better accuracy. So if you're asking the user for a yes, no question, then at that moment, the only thing that should be allowed is that phrase list that was just about yes, no. And then if you're asking for a color, then just show them one for a color. So don't activate both the color and the yes, no, because at some point it might get a little confused on some colors if they match yes or no or something like that. Uh, next, we have the, um, you can play with timeouts. On the speech recognizer, we actually have a bunch of speech recognizer timeouts. And uh, on this, you can find the babble timeout, the end silence timeout, and the initial silence timeout. So the, the first one to un easy to understand is the end silence. The end silence is how long does the recognizer wait until it doesn't hear words anymore before it goes and says, OK, you're done talking. I'm doing the recognition. Uh, the initial silence is actually more like if you, if your user have a tendency to kind of freeze. Like if when you do your user testing and you notice people like don't know what to say right away, and they need more time to think about it, then you can extend the initial silence timeout so that it will allow that silence before they start talking, and then after that it will do the recognition. So of course the silence is not going to be recognized. It's just going to be taken into consideration to make sure that it doesn't immediately say like not sure what you said. So highly recommended to allow the users to tweak these settings. An even better app would start, uh, if the user never says anything and you're constantly getting silence, you can then maybe help them and say, hey, it looks like you're hesitating. Do you want me to uh, maybe speak slower or maybe to give you more time to speak? Or if people speak very slowly and they have a tendency to stop their thoughts and then add an extra word and continue, then tweaking the initial silence might help. The Babel timeout is uh, it's supposed to be there to help you deal with non-verbal noise. Basically, any kind of background noise that could be in the background, or if somebody is just like mumbling a bunch of things before they say their command, it's like, uh, what am I looking for here? And then uh, search the web. And then if it recognizes a lot of these words before that are kind of intelligible, 
the Babel timeout will be a little more flexible in allowing that, that time of, of nonsense at the beginning. And then finally, we have managing audio input issues. Um, this is where, if at some point, you really want to have a better experience, you can tell that you, you can, you have a way of knowing if the user is running into issues with their speech recognition. So you have an event called the recognition quality degrading event that you can play with. And this is where you can access a property called problem. So it will basically raise an event called recognition quality degrading. And then you can go check the problem and it will tell you, for example, if there's no audio, that's like the generic error, or there's too much background noise or there's no audio like in a sense that maybe the microphone was muted by the user uh, or maybe the input volume is too high too low the user spoke too fast too slowly things like that the recognizer is smart enough to tell you about these things and then you can maybe give a prompt to the user and say hey it looks like uh there's no input maybe uh, did you check your microphone is it on right now or uh, we have trouble hearing you, try to speak up, speak closer to your phone. Or maybe you're in an environment that's way too noisy, try to find a more quiet space to, to work with. Uh, finally, a couple uh, quick notes here. First of all, we're going to talk about their speech recognition and globalization. So taking your app across the world to audiences in different countries and different languages. First of all, don't assume your users speak your language. So that means Americans should not assume everybody speaks English and Germans should not assume that Everybody speaks German. My German is not very good. Uh, I tried learning once, but I, I really have to get back to it. And then um, what you can do, first of all, is if you're using programmatic lists, then put your programmatic list inside of language-specific resource files. So resource files are there for translation purposes. So by putting all your English lists into an English US resource list, into a resource file, and then another one for German, another one for French, Italian, Spanish, and so on, then by loading the proper resources, then your programmatic list will have the proper strings in there to do recognition. Uh, the custom grammars, just like the VCD, could basically have multiple command sets in there. Well, in the case of an SRGS file, there's not really any such thing as a uh, multiple command sets by language, but what you could do is simply have multiple SRGS files for each language, one for each language. And then based on the culture that's set in, in the application in the phone, you can then load the proper SRGS file at runtime. If you want more information on globalizing your app, uh, oh, I forgot to aka.ms that one. So I'll, uh, yeah, sorry about that. You'll have to uh, click the link or take a photo of the screen right now. Or uh, if you have a really good memory, or you can just search for it on Bing. And then finally, if we look at a very quick recognition of the speech recognition features across platforms, um, as you can see, the, the, it doesn't look so good for iOS here because unfortunately, speech recognition is just not allowed for developers in iOS. People will say, well, wait, I can talk to Siri, right? Yes, Siri is there to help you, but inside of your app, developers don't have an SDK on iOS to do speech recognition. Android does, uh, same number of languages, not exactly the same ones, I think. They can both work offline. They can both work with open dictation, but only Windows Phone supports programmatic lists and only Windows Phone supports SRGS. Uh, Windows Store has a Bing control, as I said, it's available, but I would highly encourage you to wait until Windows 10 when you will get the same capabilities of speech recognition on Windows 10 as you get today on Windows Phone 8.1. So if you want to get started with app development, Start with Windows Phone 8.1 today, and everything that you build will be usable in Windows 10, even with Windows Store apps. So that's it. So this module, we basically look at, we looked at in-app speech recognition, how you can use it in your apps once the app has, has taken over. We have looked at multiple constraints like grammars, like programmatic lists, custom SRGS grammars from the W3C, how to optimize your speech recognition, and also uh, how to globalize your applications, and finally, a quick look at how things stack up against iOS and Android. So uh, it has a lot of content. That was a lot of content. Yeah, it's uh, speech is fun. You can you can I think it's clear by now that when you combine all these things together, you can create some really advanced applications. Yeah. So we're going to take a short uh, 10 minute break. And then when we come back, Jeremy is going to talk to us about best practices and how to build great apps that That's use right. speech. See you then. See you then. Thank you.
Hey everybody, welcome back. This is module five of developing universal apps for Windows using Cortana and the speech SDK. If you have made it this far, let me just say I'm impressed because we <laughs> yes. have had three very in-depth technical modules, yep. uh, an introduction and then three technical modules. Here we are at module five and it's gonna lighten up just a little bit. So that's, that's good news. We're gonna be talking about design guidelines out of the weeds, higher level view, you've got all the tools, all the strategies that you need for creating the, um, the speech enablement for getting people into your app and then talking to them and hearing from them both in your app. Uh, and that's great, you've got all the tools, but now let's look at some general guidelines because this is not a scenario that you want to just kind of shove in willy-nilly, uh, not uh, kind of halfway complete, anything like that. You want it to be solid and, and good. So let's go ahead and get started there. Uh, you can see here where we're at in the day. We've got this, and then we've got an advanced speech topics. This will not be for the light of heart. I'll, let me just tell you, there's it will a, not be yeah, for the Yeah, definitely. Light of heart. There's, there's more advanced stuff. There's a couple things also that absolute beginners will be able to use as well. So Absolutely. we're going to mix and match in module six. So. Yeah. yeah. You'll, be, you'll be thankful to have uh, the rewind button, the pause button, and the slow it down button for module, right. module six. But it's going to be good that that content will be there for you, so you can always refer back to it. Right, so we're not done with the code. This module is more about design guidelines, but module and, six. And yeah. module six is where the monkey comes out. Yes, the monkey's Whoa. coming. Yes. Right, okay. All right, here's a module overview. We are going to be looking at speech design considerations. This is kind of a big portion of this module. But then we're going to look at a special section on interpreting the user's intent. So kind of trying to imply, uh, apply some fuzzy logic and figure out what it was that they actually meant to do regardless of what they said. Don't trust the user. Uh, we want to talk about how to handle failures and what's unique in the area of speech. Uh, how to test your app, and again, what's unique in the area of speech. And then what I'm going to do to help you to figure out some good design guidelines, I'm going to show you some really good scenarios, some apps that I already have on my device, that, and walk you through some scenarios that are really cool that I think will um, just kind of you know, light it all up. So let's go ahead and get started. Speech design considerations. There's quite a bit in here. And what I've done is I've gone reflexive back to module one where I told you that speech is personal, experiential, critical, and fun. And I'm going to hit on each of those and give you some tips and, and guidelines for how to make your app fulfill these characteristics of good speech, all right? So let's first look at keeping it personal, all right? So speech is personal, how do you keep your app personal? First of all, there is a certain amount of information that inevitably you're gonna know about your user. Likely, if you have some sort of a business content or lifestyle app, as you called it, um, you're, you're going to know, you're going to log them in and you're going to know some general information about them. We'll use that while you're talking to them, just like you show their username on their screen. Do you remember when that kind of got popular, like to say, hello, Jim? Welcome, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 all of a sudden, it makes it feel more personal, like this application knows who I am. And when it says, hello, Jim, even on the screen, I know that I'm logged in as the right person, I'm in the right place, and when it says it to you, that makes it all the more personal. Yeah, nobody likes to be called, hey, you. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's yeah. not fun. Yeah. Logged in. <laughs> user 743. Exactly. Use what you know about your user and actually learn and adapt to your user. You can use the information in their profile, uh, again, respecting all the, pri all the privacy policies, yes. doing, doing everything the way that you should, but there are really good scenarios where you can use the information that you know about the user to say things or choose not to say things that you should or shouldn't. Be consistent with your language. Uh, there's you know, a concept in grammar that maybe you remember from school called parallelism, where you don't want to have a bulleted list where things are in different voices, that they, they don't match each other. Think about that when you're thinking about the different expressions that your app is relaying to the user, that you want those expressions to be coming off in parallel. You want them to sound one like another so that the user isn't confused and disoriented as they move around. And certainly, have a good understanding of your audience and use appropriate jargon. Like, don't just use generic language that's going to work for everybody everywhere. If you know that you are creating an app for the medical community and there are certain words that they're going to know and, and it, that are going to make them feel like home um, while they're at work, then use that jargon. Definitely use that jargon where you can. That's to your advantage. 
and I should, again, I should have bolded and, and put this in red, your app should never speak unless spoken to. So don't ever make the user feel like um, they, you've you know, violated their, their privacy by all of a sudden saying something out loud while they're in a meeting or while they're talking to somebody. I mean, that's, that's uh, quite important. Okay, moving on, keeping it experiential. How do you make this not just feel um, like any old app experience, but to make it feel like a deep and, and high quality, high value experience? You know, I went my whole life without ever using the word experiential. <laughs> and now I've been using it uh, so much in the last two days. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Take full advantage of user studies and user testing. We're going to talk just a little bit more about user testing, but it's really, really important um, to have real quality user studies and user testing for your app. And this is kind of uh, 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 before and after. User studies beforehand, figure out what it is that your users are going to want. What it is, what is it that they're going to want to say right. to your app? And then after you've implemented it, go back and say, try this. Right. And, and don't give them any bias or anything like that. Just say, try this and, and see how it works for them. Yeah, your, your app should not come with a user manual. Yeah. A, a, any app is about like downloading it, launching it, and whatever is there is there. See how they respond to it. Yeah. See if they even understand they can talk to it. Yeah. 